welcome to FOP this morning. We're so happy you're joining us online. If you are new, this is your first time, we would love for you to just hop on there and fill out an info form when you get done watching today so we can get to know you and know a little bit about you. And Jordan, you have some exciting things. I about do, about <laughs> youth guys. So, anybody in between the, the grades of eight and 12, you guys can come on down. That's a bug. <laughs> yeah, that was a bug of mine. Fourth of July. Yeah. Hot. Yes, you can come on down to Clarksville campus and it starts at 530. You guys are coming on to the youth and we're going to have lots of fun. So yes, we'll we see are. you there. And you know what? If there's any ladies out there that want to join us this coming Thursday, we are going to be going down to Morgan down at Fort Ancient. So if you're in the local area in Ohio, Clarksville area, Fort Ancient, we're going to meet at Morgan's Canoe at 930. We're going to take off kayaking at 10 o'clock. Come on down. We'll have some fun, ladies. We'd love for you to join in with us. Now, why don't you join us now while we go into worship?
you're with us today or you're viewing with us Sunday morning. Right now, listen, if there's a need, if you need something from God, God is able. Just say those three words, God is able. In Corinthians it says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Just lift your hand right now. Lord, we believe that you are the God that hears and sees and delivers. We believe, Ephesians 3.20, that you will do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think or could imagine that's what you can do in our lives and there's a power that works on the inside of us that's the power of the holy spirit and i pray lord god today for a miracle i pray for a miracle you know exactly what everyone needs you can sort out every detail and every need and you are a good father and you love us we praise you we praise you come on just give him praise give him praise Just sing that one little part. Everything and nothing less, I give you everything and nothing less. Forever, everything and nothing less. My life. My heart is yours, yours. completely yours. Everything. Everything. at somebody say I'm glad you're here if you're viewing with us right now I'm glad you're here and I believe you're going to get blessed today blessed <laughs> that's what I was trying to say and the title of this this is actually back into our hindsight is 2020 and you know usually when you hear that that's usually like a negative like if I had have known then what I know now I would be blessed I, w I would have invested in the right stocks or all those kinds of things. But I don't look at it like that. I don't look at it like hindsight is twenty twenty. I look at it like, look what God has done. And I believe that right now is a hindsight moment. Believe it or not, you're living in hindsight moments. From here on, 2020 will always be that year. That year. And I believe that God is going to do something in this year. Do I have any agreement that God's going to do something marvelous, miraculous, out of the box, crazy, loco, whatever you want to call it, God's going to do it. I, I really believe it. So in this Hindsight is 2020 series, uh, today's message is titled, Bo Weevil. Okay? You're supposed to laugh. Because in Enterprise, Texas, at the turn of the 19th to 20th century, you know, the industry was cotton. And all of a sudden, a bow weevil, look in, in the name is the word evil. A bow weevil came in and destroyed the cotton crops, just obliterated, just destroyed the cotton. And, and it put, it crippled the economy and really to the point of collapse they didn't know what to do. And one great man, George Washington Carver, and a few other scientists got together, and they kept looking at this ground, and they said, you know what? This place would be perfect for peanuts. So if you go to Enterprise, Texas today, if it hasn't been pushed over, because a lot of statues have been pushed over, but there's a statue made to a bow weevil. Can you believe it? 
I mean, there's a memorial to the boll weevil because, because they changed crops and they didn't only save the city, but it changed the industry multiple times greater. Multi they are the peanut capital multiple times greater because of that one little insect that changed everything. Changed everything. I believe that we're going to experience some boll weevil moments and have some bow weevil experiences. That everything's going to change from here, but it's not going to be worse. It's going to be better. It's going to be blessed. Because something came in and just disrupted everything that we kind of relied on and trusted in. You know, the word serendipity is a strange word. What is it? Serenity and dipity? What is dipity? Makes me want an ice cream on this July 4th weekend. Serendipity means happy accident, that an occurrence or a development happens by accident and it comes out to your good. Has anybody ever had that happen? Pastor Tony Brock was talking the other week about old truck that he couldn't get rid of and somebody went over the median and lost control and hit their truck and totaled it where they got a payout. They couldn't sell it, but they got money for it. I mean, that's, that's serendipity right there. I'm looking for some serendipitous moments when things we're meant to destroy will actually develop. They'll change and they'll bless us, just like Lifehouse Church, that God's going to bless, that God's going to do something mighty. Amen? Amen. I want to share with you today from Matthew chapter 10. I want to read a few scriptures here in Matthew chapter 10. We're going to talk about the calling of God as he has sent us out, it seems like we face uh, hostile situations, we, we face adversity, we face trial, but he gives us literally a blueprint, Jesus does, to his disciples as he sends them out. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, this will come back around and you will see how this is a hindsight moment. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Because in verse 7, it starts like this. Jesus said, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he says this. He didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick. Wow. That's faith in action. He didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received freely give. He doesn't say to tolerate, to condone, or to cope with. He says, no, just do it, what I've called you to do it. In fact, the, the first verse of chapter 10, he said, I, I've given you the power to do it, to cast out against unclean spirits, to, to drive them out, to heal all manner of disease. So he said, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you've received, freely give. Verse 9, Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. And what he's saying is you don't have to take money. There are things that money can't buy. But there's a lot of things money can buy. Sometimes we feel so attached to that thing called money, don't we? But he said just go out by faith. Nor scrip, verse 10, for your journey, neither two coats... So you could take one, but not two. In other words, he's a God of success, but not a God of excess. It's all right. I, if I go to your closet, it's all right. All of us have more shoes than we need. We've got two feet and a hundred pairs of shoes, you know. But this is what he says to these disciples as he's sending them out. Not staves, but the workman is worthy of his hire. Verse 11 said, and into whatsoever city or town... Most translations call that village. You shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go there. This is going to be a good, strong teaching. I want you to get this, okay? Because he says, when you go into a city, find out who's worthy. There's going to be some vetting here. And go to their house, and into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who's worthy. Verse 12, and when you come into a house, salute it. In other words, bless it. And if the house be worthy, 
let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be you therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Father, bless this word. Speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to give you three points this weekend. Real fast points. So you can go out and shoot fireworks or picnic or whatever you do. You know, have, eat all you want, whatever you do. But I'm going to give you three fast points today. Number one is this. Make beneficial associations. Make beneficial associations. Now, he tells them to go into a village. One of the problems with villages is that villages have village people. How many of you remember the village people? You know, those guys were imposters. That guy wasn't an Indian. That guy was he, he, there's no way that guy was a policeman. You know what I'm saying? Whatever else they were, army guys, whatever. That was the village people, YMCA people. But village people are full of imposters. And fake people, disingenuous people, people that will be your friend for a day, people that will be your friend as long as you have something they want. They're village people. And he said, when you go into a village, just find out who's worthy. Worthy, worthy has to do with worth. We usually attribute that to God. In other words, there's a worth, there's a value. What he is saying is there is a worth and there is a value to you. You're a child of God. He said, you're my disciple. I've called you into this hostile world. There's a worth. There's a value to you. You, you don't just associate with anybody. Now, I know because we think we've got to help everybody, and we do. We do help everybody, but we don't hang out with everybody. Okay, I know this is going to be a little bit sketchy for some people because they think you're supposed to hang out you're supposed to party you're supposed to do everything and that way I'll show them Christ but the truth is you show them Christ by doing your good works for them where they see it from God but you don't act like them you're separate that's what the word holy means to be set apart set apart unto you answer to a higher voice a higher authority and he said you go and you find where your worth can go and where your worth can be complimented. It's mutually beneficial. I like good friends. I've met a whole lot of new good friends right on that road, right there. But I like good friends. I like good people. Somebody say amen. You like good people? And sometimes you know you have to endure through some bad relationships before you get to a good relationship. But the Bible said name is three and three. How could two? Come on up here, honey. I'm going to embarrass my wife real fast. How can two? She looks so good. She, she always looks so good, but I'm going to use her. It says, how can two people walk together except they be agreed? How can we walk together? See, if, if, I, if I see somebody and I say, you're worthy. Actually, I'm so unworthy. I followed Bobby around college campus. I was like the third party of a guy who's a good friend who I think was trying to date Bobby and I just would not let them. I just, I, I was that other, you know, somebody said, we well, feel like a third wheel. It's like, I don't care. One of these days I'm going to get my chance to drive this car. So I'm, I'm just, I'm going to, you might need a third wheel, you know, who knows? You might have a flat. And so I, I did, I did. <laughs> but let's look at this. Just, just do this with me. She doesn't know what I'm about to do. Okay, so you walk, you walk, and I'm going to walk. So if, if we're not in agreement, this is square dancing in the South. We do, this, this, this is square dancing. This is uh, the forbidden dance. Uh, if, if, you, if we walk like this, look, and we walk, and we're both walking our own way, you know what we're doing? All we're doing is circles, cycles, circles, cycles. How many of our lives have been like cycles? 
Like you can look back and that nothing has changed. It's the same thing. But when you hook up with somebody, my dad used to say, this is a little crass, but he said, if you sleep with dogs, you'll wake up with what? You wake up with fleas. It's been said, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You really hang in that same pocket of the people that you're with. That's, that's, that's in everything. That's in your finances. That's in everything. You, you stay in that same pocket. And so here's what you've got to do. You've got to join yourself with somebody that's beneficial. And I want you to walk backwards, okay? Walk backwards. Okay, now you walk forward. Go ahead. If you find somebody, because it's going to take some give and take, but if we're going to walk together in agreement, we're, we're not the same. Thank God we're not the same. You should thank God because you've got her as the pastor's wife. But we're not the same, but we're the same. There's something about we're same-ish. There's something about that. He sent them out in pairs. Think about this. I've got an iPhone. I've got an iPad. I've got a laptop. It's... It doesn't take just two to be paired anymore. I've got all of these things paired. Are y'all following me? They're paired. In other words, they all have the same information, but the iPad's not an iPhone, and the iPhone's not a laptop. They're all different, but they're all the same. I can get the same information from every one of them because they all get it from a cloud. And when two walk together under the cloud of God's glory, you know Jesus is coming back in a cloud. And there's an alignment in what we say and what we do. Let me just help you. This is going to enhance your life. When I pray for you, that's one thing. But when we pray for you, that's a whole other thing. That's called agreement. If any two touch and agree as concerning any one thing, it will happen. Thank you, honey. That's alignment. Alignment. So number one is this. He said, he sent them out and he said, find people that are worthy, that you can align yourself with, make beneficial associations. Number two, manage and appoint your peace. Now this is going to be a strange concept for some. But peace is personal. Just like your space, your personal space, you have a personal peace. Some run hotter than others. Some can handle a little more chaos than others. Come on, somebody say amen. Some, some like a little more conflict than others, you know? Say it's in their blood or whatever. But manage and appoint your peace. Your peace is personal. Your peace is powerful. Your peace is pivotal. This is what he said here. Jesus said, when you go, go into that house and say, my peace is here. In other words, where you show up, your peace. You know, when you pack, when you pack your bags, don't forget to pack what's, whatever. You know, toothbrush. Listen to this. Don't forget to pack your peace. Don't forget to pack your peace. Your peace goes. It sounds like a Second Amendment kind of thing, doesn't it? Like, that too. But don't forget to pack your peace, the peace of God. Don't forget to take your peace with you because I've left my peace some places. Because this is what he said. He said, because when you leave, and if they reject you, if they send you out, if they're tough, if, 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 if you know that the gospel is not going to be reached there, maybe it'll be reached some other way. It doesn't mean you're giving up on somebody. It just means that you're moving on. And he said, require your peace to come back with you. That's what he said. He said, tell your peace to return to you. Your peace can do that. Because for about a year, I left my peace in 2018. We're in 2020 now. But I left my peace back in 2018. I felt like I'd been hurt. I'd been done wrong. All that kind of stuff. And I left my peace there. And, and you know what? I found out I had to return to that place and said, my peace come back with me. My peace is going where I'm going. 
I'm going to walk in peace. I'm not going to walk in conflict. I'm not going to walk in fear. I'm going to walk in peace. For the steps of a good man are ordained of the Lord, and He delights in His way. I'm going to walk in peace. I'm going to have the peace of God all my life. And I'm not going to leave it in the wrong place. Tell your neighbor, don't leave it in the wrong place. Pick it back up. Pick it back up. Your peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. My peace recognizes my future. Sometimes I don't, but my peace does. That's why your peace will try to align you. It will actually try to course correct you and pull you back into an area and say, I have peace with that. You can go into a church. You can go into a family. You can go into a home and you feel good about it. You just feel good being in there because your peace is trying to align you. I'm talking about an internal witness. I'm talking about something on the inside that can correct itself. Your peace recognizes your future. My peace recognizes my potential. Have you ever seen somebody do something and you think, I think I could do that? Anybody? Anybody? That's, that's your peace. That's recognizing, I think I could do that. I remember being a youth pastor, Pastor Brian, and, and, and thinking, I, I think I, I could be a lead pastor. In fact, I remember seeing somebody plan a church, a good friend of mine that I visited in Hilton Head, planted a church in an old stripper bar, like stripper, like, I, am I saying that right? Because it's like a strip mall, the, the one that you take your clothes off. And they had church right there. And he was part of my ordination process. And when I went through that Randy Carr, I, I said to myself, I was like, I think I could do that. Not strip. Not strip. But I think I could do something radical. I think I could see things without having to see a big chapel. And, 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 and I don't even know how to spell chandelier. To have a chandelier. If you can't spell it, you don't need it. I, I think that I could do something out of the box. Are y'all hearing me? Because your peace knows your potential. Your peace sees something that you don't see. It recognizes something that you don't recognize. See, hindsight is 2020. You'll come back around and say, I, I knew that. I knew I should have done that. I knew I should have done that. Philippians 4, 7 says that God will give us a peace that passes or surpasses understanding. So we always look to know. If I know this, I'm going to do it. If I know, I can go. If I know it, I can do it. The Bible said there is a peace that comes from God. We're talking about navigating 2020 and beyond. There's a peace that comes from God that will help you to navigate not only where you are, but where you're going. And will say, you can keep going, you can keep going, you don't have to look back. And God's peace can be upon you. In other words, you can do something. And everybody can tell you, like, I don't, you know, I, I, I pray for you, I'm worried about you. And you can say, I've got peace about it. I've got peace about it. I've got peace about it. There's something about it that just, I still have peace. I can do this because I know it's a divine enablement from God. And he said that he will give you a peace that passes understanding. Now that is the picture of two things racing. So if logic is outrunning peace, get this. If you understand it, then you're behind. If you're, under, if you're in the understanding, if you're in the know of it, well, what's going to happen next? I don't know, but I have peace about it. Because I've outran the logic. I've outran the understanding. And I'm trusting in God. Don't take money. That's crazy. Don't take money. Just take, take the clothes you're wearing. Don't take a script. Don't take a pen. Don't take, you're going to be okay. Just go. And I've called you. And you've got something that they need. You could go into a house and bring peace over a house. When's the last time you went in your house and just brought peace in your house? Or have you gone in your house and brought scandal, chaos? 
You know what I'm saying? Peace, peace, peace. Number three, number three, leave it there. I was going to say shake it off, but that sounds too Taylor Swifty. He said, when you go into a place and they reject you, they send you out. He said, first of all, tell your peace. Come on. It's like, it's like having a dog that follows you the way it does. You know, dogs are awesome. How many of you love dogs? Cats, not so much. But you say, come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. You know, cat people, you work for your you work for your animal. You know, dog people, it's just the opposite. They like work for you. They want your attention. You're out there trying to pet your cat. But, uh, I, okay, don't sideline, don't sideline. So that, so your peace follows you. Come on, peace. Peace just goes with you wherever you go. Peace just follows you. No, I'm not leaving it there. What it means by leaving it there is your mind's just troubled. You leave and you're still in it. You're still in it. This is how he said, I'm going to make sure that you're not in it anymore. He said, when you get out of there. Now, just can you imagine this? He said, get out of there. Take off your shoes. Shake the dust off of them. Can you imagine? You just walk right out of somebody's house and say, you mind if I use your hose? And you just wash all of the debris, the dirt not too long ago, I was, I, I was standing in line. It was at a, a fast food restaurant when we could still go in fast food restaurants. And there was somebody there, and he had white shoes, and he had this red stain all around. And I listened to his accent, and I said, are you from the Piedmont, South Carolina? And he said, he just smiled at me like, how did you know? And I, I knew because of that red clay and that accent. What God is saying, what Jesus is saying to the disciples, He said, don't take any of that there where you're going. Leave it there. Don't take any of it. Don't take any of that, that debris with you. Nothing from there goes here. Nothing from that is going into your future. You're going to wash it off. We're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there. If it hurt, yes, it hurt, but leave it there. Because God's going to bless you so much more. I was in South Carolina not long ago. Went to one of the first churches. And I know a lot of people from South Carolina view us. But one of the first churches where we worked. And it, it, it could have been a great source of offense. It could have been a great source of, of literally giving up. You know when people start making assumptions about you. And how qualified you are. And how qualified you're not. And all of that kind of stuff. And I drove by that place. I just, I went out of my way to drive by because I wanted to see it. I just wanted to see it. And you know what? It looked just like it did 25 years ago. It looked the same. Not one thing has changed. And I hope that the spirit and the presence over that place was greater. But when I thought about what God had done in my life and how I could have tried to just you know, jump through the, the, the hoops and, and stay right there and dig it out and work, work, work. Sometimes God sends a bow weevil just to say, this isn't your harvest. I've got another harvest for you. And if you really knew what this harvest is, it is so much better. It is so much better. I want to show you this because it's, it, it is the Scripture to the Scripture. In Matthew, when we read the Scripture, well, how Jesus sent them out, what He tell, told them to take with them, there's a companion Scripture, and it's in Luke 22. Just one little Scripture. But it's the same. It's, it, it, it's dealing with the same. It's later. It's much later. Because right here, it's time sensitive. Jesus says, you're going. This is the way I'm sending you. I'm commissioning you to go. But I want you to see this because this is powerful. This is powerful. Luke 22. In Luke 22, verse 35, Jesus is speaking to the disciples again. Somebody say, hindsight is 2020. 
He said, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes, see, when he sent me, like, he, don't, he doesn't care. About, he, he doesn't take care of his people very well. He, doesn't, he didn't, didn't send them a little per diem, something, you know, some money, some traveling money. He doesn't, he doesn't really care, does he? So later we get to see how much he does care. He said, when I sent you, when I sent you without purse, script, shoes, lacked you anything? And they said, nothing. Now, you could say that wrong. You can leave the comma out and say they said nothing. Like, it was kind of tough out there. But they actually said the word nothing. He said, did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. Did you need anything? Nothing. Were you okay out there? What, what could I have done for you? Could you? Did you need anything else? Nothing. That's the hindsight moment that goes back and says, God, if I'm faithful to you, if I'm obedient to you, that if I go out the way you've told me to go out, if I make, make the mutually beneficial associations, if I keep my peace about me, and don't, don't get caught up in the conflict, it's not that I stay neutral. It's just that I'm going to be peaceful. I'm going to make it through this. I'm not going to get caught up in all of these wars and factions and friction and people that are against each other. And at the end of the day, I'm going to stand before him and he's going to say, did you need anything? And you're going to say, I didn't need anything. Which would be Nothing. So in the kingdom of God, nothing is everything. What do you have today? You might say nothing, but in the kingdom of God, nothing is everything. Because God is able to take what you have and multiply it and do so much more. Let me pray for you. Come on, stand to your feet with me. You who are viewing over the internet, The entrance to a new season is preceded by the exit of an old season. You have to make up in your mind, I'm, I'm leaving this village and I'm going to another village because God has predestined, God has ordained, God has set this forth. It might look pretty bad right now where you're at in this village experience. But even right now, as we begin to pray, you can shake dust off. You don't have to go to somebody. You don't have to say something to anybody. You don't have to write a, a manifesto of how I this day have moved on. No, in your heart, you can just shake the dust off. You know, dust is, is around 85% flesh. That's kind of disturbing. But literally, that's what dust is. Old flesh. You say, I don't want my old flesh. I don't want that junk anymore in my life. Shake that off of me. Shake that off of me. Peace return. Peace return. Peace return. Tired of sleepless nights. Peace return tired of conflict everywhere I turn peace return my peace return to me the peace of God return over me say that over your church peace return say that over your life peace return say that over your family say that over your business peace return peace return say that over your retirement peace return peace return Peace return. And see, you're going to stand out like you glow in the dark in this world. When you walk through this world, you're going to look like you're eight foot tall because you have peace. People are going to say, there's something about them. I can't, I can't quite put a finger on it, but there's something about them and I like them. I want what they have. Peace return. 
peace return. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you having all sufficiency, sufficiency in all things should abound to every good work. Father, right now, we call out to you. And we say, return. Return, Lord God. I don't want my peace held up in a calendar year on a date something that happened somebody that happened I pray right now Lord God for peace to return I pray for people to walk in victory to walk in love to walk in agreement together I pray Lord God that you send us out in pairs that we are pairing even right now Lord God as thousands of people will view that we begin to pair right now. We access the same cloud. We begin to pair right now. That God is going to do something great in our lives. God's going to show Himself strong on our behalf. We thank You, Jesus. We thank You, Jesus. We thank You, Jesus. According to His Word, sick be healed in the name of Jesus. According to His Word, he gave us power. Matthew 10, I gave you power. Heal the sick. Sick be healed in the name of Jesus. If you're sick in your body, in your mind, say be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Demonic activity, I grab you by the throat. And I cast you out. That's what it actually means. It means I got kicked out of some place. Nobody politely asked, would you, sir, would you guys please leave? No. He said they cast them out. Grab them by the seat of the pants and by the throat and throw them out. You are no longer allowed here. You are evicted. You are evicted. Demonic spirits. You are evicted. Uncleanness. Spirits of uncleanness. You are evicted. Now you can't go back and do the same things you did. Keep them out. You can't open windows. Keep them out kick them out the door and let them crawl through the window like your eye window or ear window. In the name of Jesus. Luke 10, 19, Jesus gave authority. He said, I've given you authority to trample. You know, we've done a lot of services. This church, we've done all kinds of services. But I, I think it would be cool someday we just have a trampling service. Wouldn't that be cool? Just to have a tramp. You have to wear some trampling shoes, though, you know. Something that would make some noise. He said, I've given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. Nothing by any means. I like the idea of that. I'm just thinking about that right now. A trampling service. When are we going to schedule that? Ellie, when are we going to trampling service? Nothing by any means should harm you. Come on, right there where you're at. Why don't you just pick your feet up? Say, I feel stupid. You don't feel stupid if you're driving demons out. You don't feel stupid if you're crushing his head. In the name of Jesus. Be glorified. The name of Jesus be glorified. You've called us. You've commissioned us. You've set us forth. Hindsight is 2020. We're going to go back and we're going to think COVID. Did COVID keep us from our, from our blessings? Did COVID keep us from getting what God wanted us to get? What else? What else is there? Is it going to be racism? What is it that's going to hold you back? What's going to keep you from your place where God has for you? Lord, I pray right now over your people. I pray for power and authority, Lord God. Power and authority that comes from on high. And blessing, Lord God, to cover your people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for tuning in today. 
If you committed your life to Christ today, or you recommitted your life to Christ, fill out an info form at fopchurch.net slash info form so that we can connect with you and be praying for you. Just as a reminder, you can give your tithes and offerings online at fopchurch.net slash give. On our FOP Church app under the giving tab, you can text the amount you want to give to 937-400-1779 or you can mail a check made out to FOP Church to P.O. Box 381, Clarksville, Ohio 45113. You can join us in person at our Clarksville campus on Saturdays at 5.30 p.m., Sundays at 9.30 and 11 a.m., or you can always watch online. Thanks for joining us this morning and have an awesome week.